So when we lift off in the last log, we were able to create a level and we were able to navigate around on this level by using the AWSD keys um, so that you can pan the camera back and forth on this level here without going out the borders. So the next thing I would like to add is the character that the player is going to control. Um, and the reason that I would like to add that as the next thing is because he will also need some pathfinding. And the pathfinding is going to be a very important thing in this tower defense or in a tower defense in general um, because all the mobs will need to um, have some pathfinding in them so they can navigate from the start portal to the end portal. So I am going to add the player character here uh, to the game and then I'm going to add some pathfinding so that he can navigate around on the map um, and walk around the towers that we will be placing later as well. So let's have a look at the player. Okay, so now I have added my player to the game. As you can see here, whenever I play the game now, the player is also spawned in the middle uh, of, the, of the map here. Um, and he's simply just animated in an idle animation. So I haven't added the functionality yet for moving him around um, and playing the other animations yet, but I have created an animation controller for him um, that can handle all his uh, directions. He can walk down, lift, right and up, so he can walk in all directions. And I have also created an idle layer that can handle um, his uh, idling in all directions as well. So I haven't added the script for it, but I have created the animation controller so that it can uh, handle the different animations. As you can see, I already put up all um, the parameters that I would need to make sure that he plays the right direction here. Um, what else? I have created some new um, some new scripts. I have created a player script, which simply contains a singleton because I think that I will be needing to um, access the player from other scripts at some point. So I added a singleton and I've created a unit script. So the unit script um, doesn't do much right now, but I think I'm going to base all my units on this script so that whenever I create new monsters and stuff in the game, they will simply inherit from the unit um, because they are all going to have pathfinding. They're all going to, going to have sprites and animations and such. such. So I figured that I would put all the general functionality into the unit uh, script here so that I don't have to rewrite all these things, um, being active, having a sprite render, having a destination, somewhere to walk and everything, um, and having a grid position, for example. So I figured I will try to put all the general stuff into the unit, but of course, all this will be gone into details in, in the actual tutorial. Um, the player is simply spawned in the middle of the level. Um, I just went to the level manager and created a new function called, let's see where it is, uh, spawn player. And it just places his start in the middle of the map. And then it instantiates the player at the position. And then we set his grid position to the player start um, position here. So not, not much new in this or not, not much um, very complicated in this. It's simply just instantiating the prefab at the correct position here. So that is the player's uh, base functionality. The next thing I would like to do is to take a look at the pathfinding and this is the more interesting part and the more fun part. Because I am going to use a, um, a pathfinding algorithm called A star. Um, I know I was talking about that we can just add some easy pathfinding where there's a node here and it just links to the next node and then the mobs can only walk on this path here. But I would like to make it possible for the mobs to walk wherever they want to go. And also the player will need this because if the player want to move up here, he should just be able to go from here up to this tile here instead of walking all the way around here to get here. Um, so to make it more of a free world or, some, uh, or so to say, I would like to add the A star pathfinding. And this will also be gone into details in the actual tutorial. Um, maybe we will add two different game modes. Maybe we'll make sure that we have one game mode where the mobs can walk from their position directly to the short, through the shortest route to the next tile. Uh, and maybe we'll add another game mode where the mobs are linked uh, or bound to this path here in the middle uh, of the map. But um, I have a very old implementation of A star, um, and this project here is it's very badly coded. So actually, this I'm going to base my pathfinding on this um, this code here, um, 
which is a project I made maybe six or five years ago um, because I figured when I needed to test or check the code here, it was an old um, an old project I needed to revive from um, Visual Studio 2010, I think the version was before I upgraded. Um, but I'm going to show this simple simple A star here. Of course, I'm going to take the code in here and improve it. I can already see lots of things where I will be able to reduce 10 if statements to one and such um, because this is this was still when I was learning how to code so it's very badly coded but of course I'll take this all the code here upgrade it and make it more efficient and easier to understand so that you guys can also learn something from it when we add this pathfinding anyway um, basically a star is a way of um, navigating or finding the shortest path from one field in a grid for example to another field in a grid so if I click here, uh, this is my start position. And if I click over here, well, this is my goal position. So Mario here actually wants to run from this position to the mushrooms position. And to do so, he'll have to navigate around different things. And, and basically in our game, we will have some towers. So these walls here will be towers in our game. So our mobs will have to know how to move around these towers. So. When we calculate the path, uh, this might be a little confusing because I'm not explaining the algorithm, but basically uh, the orange and the blue notes here are notes that the algorithm has looked at as a possible way. And the light green stuff here, lime green stuff, is the way that the um, actual mob will take um, through, through the level to get to its goal. So this is the start portal and this is basically the end portal. So this is something we are going to implement here. And there are lots of things you need to take into account um, for example, if I restart the project here, I don't think I can reset it in there. If I restart, right? Well, we will have to make sure that we can't do this. We can't place nodes all around the end goal so that our mobs can't run from start to end. If we do so, if, if we make this possible, well, then the mobs need to have a way to smash the towers down and then walk through them after they have smashed the tower. Uh, because if I do so, you'll see that no path is available here. Um, also, we will need to make sure that we don't cut corners when it's not possible. Because if we have the start position here and the end position here, and we want to go up here, well, then you can see there is some corner cutting, or there's no corner cutting uh, happening here, uh, because it goes here and then it takes a straight uh, right here. So we need to make sure whenever we take a turn, we don't go through the, some corner cutting, because uh, maybe I can explain it better if I rerun this and place them up here. You'll see that now I'm going uh, diagonal. I'm taking diagonal moves here all the way up here. But if I had a wall, then I shouldn't be able to go diagonal right across it because if I do so and do like this, then if I would go from this position directly to this position without going around here in the corner, well, then it would look like my enemy or my player is walking through this wall and also if this was a wall well then a tower that is then my enemy will walk up here and walk through the towers so we need to make sure that we don't cut corners when we are close to a tower or wall and these are just some different things we'll have to take into account whenever we um, actually implement this algorithm and as i said earlier of course i will explain this fully in the tutorial i'll show you how all these things works and how we make sure that the corner cutting doesn't happen everything uh, when i have upgraded the version of this um, this algorithm here but for now i will try to implement this in the game so that the player can walk around in the game world and when the player can walk around in the right directions i'll try to animate him uh, in the correct directions and then we can start adding the towers and make sure that the player walks around the towers and making the nodes unwalkable and so on. Okay, so I managed to implement the A star algorithm in this project here. Um, I had a few um, things I needed to look over a couple of times and debug through a couple of times to make it work, but in the end I managed to make it work. Um, and I can also show you some of my concerns in a few seconds. I just want to show you how this works. Um, as you can see here, the player is now able to click somewhere on the map uh, and this character here walks um, exactly to that tile that you click on. Um, so this is also the same pathfinding that we'll be using for the monsters. 
but the monsters will basically be spawning from the start and then their destination will always be the end portal so they will try to take the shortest path right now we don't have any towers or anything to place in front of the player um, so we'll have to add them later to um, make sure that he can walk around them because those tiles are not walkable for example I haven't added the functionality for cutting corners yet um, I will also wait with that until we have added some towers um, as you can see here he just walks around in this grid um, so basically the grid you see here with all the tiles is also the grid that I'm using for my A star and as you can see here he's always animated in the correct direction if he goes to the left he looks to the left he goes to the right he looks to the right and the same with up and down um, and as you can see here if he, you click on a top right tile then he goes up and right at the same time and he starts animating in the correct direction here as well um, yeah, quick look at the code without going into details. Um, it was actually pretty, fairly smooth, the code I made. Let's see. I made a new folder called A star and I made a new A star script. And the A star script basically handles all the A star algorithm here. Um, and then I have a node. And a node is something that sits on that the A star algorithm is using. And these nodes here. Um, are equal to one tile each so every tile in the game has a node so that the A-star algorithm can sort them and figure out which path to take and then I also have a point which is basically just a position in my game world uh, for the tiles um, If for the animation I added the animation functionality for uh, up in the unit class so that whenever I add some monsters they will also just use this animation functionality here um, so that I can just add a monster and they will already be able to be animated in the correct direction when they're walking through um, through this level here using the A-star algorithm. One of my concerns for the A-star algorithm is the effect uh, like efficiency, efficiency, if I could say that correctly, let's try again, is the efficiency of uh, the algorithm. Because there are some different kind of collections um, and this is also something I will demonstrate in the tutorial. But there are different kinds of collections in C Sharp, and some collections are faster um, at some specific operations than others because of the algorithm that they're using behind the scenes, right? So some collections, like a list, is faster at, for example, removing items, and some other collections um, are faster at adding items and so on. Um, this isn't the fastest one to remove something, but it's just an example. So every time you pick some sort of collection, you have to pick the right collection for the purpose that you're using it for. Um, and to do that, there's something called Big O Notation, and I'll also talk about that in the tutorial. Um, but the main point I'm trying to make here is that whenever you pick a collection, you need to pick a collection that is good at whatever you need it for. So if you need to remove something very fast all the time, or add something fast all the time, then you of course need to pick a collection that is fast at searching, like at removing stuff. And if you need to find an item fast, then you need to pick a collection that is fast at finding an item and so on. So the two collections that I checked, um, tested to see how fast this is, is a collection called has set, which is, which is the collection that I ended up with, and another collection called a list. Um, let see if I can find where I added that uh, here. So this is exactly the same algorithm. One is using a has set, the other one is using a list. So I'm not going to go into details what a has set is and what a list is. It's all in the tutorial, but um, let's see if I can find it. I added some test code somewhere here. And this test code basically makes sure that whenever I click on a tile, it tries to find the path from the player's position to that tile it wants to walk to 10,000 times. And then I time it, how long time does it takes, take for this algorithm to find the path from the player's position to the in position 10,000 10, times. And then I tested it with uh, a list as the collection for containing all the nodes. And I tested it with a has set um, as a collection for t containing all the nodes. And this is basically what I'm doing here. I'm running the same algorithm 10,000 times and I'm running the algorithm 10,000 times down here with a list and a has set. And as you can see here, uh, if we try to rerun the game, then you'll see in the debug.log how long, how much time it took for the algorithms to uh, find the path 10,000 times. So if I click up here, see it freezes for a little while. And when it's done freezing, then you'll see with the has set, 
it took 2.4 seconds and with the list instead of a hash set it took 2.7 seconds so when you walk a, f a far distance like this it's faster to use the hash set than to use a list and basically yeah the closer you get to the player the closer the two um, performances are uh, but in general the hash set is actually always better unless if you walk one tile uh, one or two tiles then the list gets a little better than the hash set but that's not very often that you only walk that little distance here so in general as far as i i have tested the hash set is the better choice of the two so that's what i'm going to go with in this tutorial um, because if we look here we try to clear this and we walk like two tiles then you'll see the list might be slightly faster no not even here it's 0 0.55 0 0.54 the has set maybe if i walk one tile 0 0.4 yeah so if i take one tile then the list is faster than the has set but in general the has set is always faster than the list so i'm going to use the has set for the algorithm in the tutorial at least um, i think that's it for this video log in the next log I will start looking at placing towers and making sure that the player can walk around them and then later we can start looking at adding the monsters and attacking them and so on. Um, yeah, Thank you for watching this log. I hope you'll continue to watch it and remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page so if you like my work um, then please support me. Um, you can support me by going to the Patreon page on the screen. And on the Patreon page, you can get private tutoring. Um, you can get all my projects that I ever made, for example. 